Does that sound familiar? What if I told you that this sound, the major scale, is the fundamental scale of both Western and Turkish music? Hi, my name is Professor Bierson, and welcome to the Basics of Turkish Music Theory, Episode 2. In this lesson, we will learn the pitches of the Turkish makam system. In our previous lesson, we discussed how Turkish, Greek, Arab, and Persian music theorists tuned scale fragments, or tetrachords, based on differences of a Pythagorean comma. This is how makam theory had been understood for centuries in a school known as the systematist. Among the most influential theorists to deviate from this approach was Dimitri Kantemir, known in Turkish as Kantemiroğlu. A Moldavian prince who was raised in the Ottoman court as part of a political arrangement between the Ottomans and the Moldavians. This is the same arrangement that produced Vlad Dracula in the 15th century. Vlad the Impaler, as he became known, and Mehmet, the sultan who conquered Istanbul, were educated together in Constantinople as princes before assuming the throne of their respective empires. There is a good Netflix series on that, which I recommend. Kantemir, like Dracula, was educated alongside the Ottoman elite in the Topkapı Sarai. <laughs> He excelled at music so much that he became a performer on the tambur, a long-necked lute popular in the Ottoman court in the 17th and 18th centuries, and a composer of music in the makam system. Around the year 1700, court instructors requested that Kantemir produce a theoretical treatise on music, which he presented to the Sultan Ahmed III. In the treatise, Kantemir criticizes the systematist school, saying that the method of the previous theory is too abstract to be useful in actual performance of music in the makam system. Kantemir's alternative, based on the training he received at court, was to identify and categorize the pitches of the makam system, called perde, according to diatonic and chromatic. This way of conceiving the makam system brings it more in line with Western pitch collections, or those of Hindustani classical music. In this view, there are certain diatonic pitches, and then there are the pitches which alter them. In this video, we will only talk about the diatonic pitches. They are Yega, Ashiran, Urak, Rast, Duga, Sega, Charga, Neva, Husseini, Evich, Gardanie, Muhayer, Tis Sega, Tis Charga, Tis Neva, Tis Husseini. Remember that the backwards flat and the sharp in the key signature refer to one comma lowered pitches. So the Bs are one comma lower from a B natural, and the F sharps are one comma lower from the F sharp. Again, you can see my previous lesson on intonation in Turkish music to understand this better. It is important to note here that the music scholar Walter Feldman has argued that the intonation of Irak, Sega, Evich, and Tis Sega was likely in Kantemir's time equivalent to that of Persian music, a neutral sounding 2.5 commas lower. However, the modern Turkish interpretation of this pitch collection uses the one comma lowered intonation, creating something analogous to a G major scale in just intonation. Even better is that while some makams have nicknames, Kantemir shows that the names of the makams derive from the names of the perdes that are used as final tones. For example, a melody using this pitch collection that ends on the rust perde is in the makam rust. A melody that ends on duga is in the makam duga, or we actually call that ushak. that ends on Neva is in the Makam Neva. Here is Husseini. Here 
is Muhayyar. Okay, so here we have a Rast Ilahi. This is an Islamic hymn in the Maqam Rast. <laughs> Rast is the first note of this melody. Also notice the key signature. You have the one comma lowered B and the one comma lowered F sharp. So this is using the diatonic pitch collection of Kantemir. And you can see like the first measure here, we've got Rast, 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 and then we have Duga, and then we have Sega. So we got a little rising scale here using the pitch collection. Sega repeats, and then we go down, Duga, Rast, Rak, Ashiran, Yega, all the way down the scale. Then we wind up back on the Rast. Rast repeats a couple of times. We go to the Duga, the Sega, Sega repeats, back down to Duga, back down to Rast. So this first melody here, the first line of music, kind of revolves around the pitch, Rast from the pitch collection, and it uses only those pitches. There are no other pitches, and that qualifies as a Rast Makam. Uh, the melody continues from there, though. We have a little bit of an expansion of the range up till Neva. Neva repeats a couple of times, and then we fall to Charga, and then Sega, back to Charga, and Sega, and then we drop to the Duga, and then Rast. Rast repeats a couple of times, and then we get Duga and Sega. Sega repeats, Duga, and Rast again. So here's the Rast. And this second melody is also Rast Makam. So you can see that only using the pitches of this diatonic pitch collection of Kantemir and beginning and, our ending, beginning and ending our melodies on the pitch, the Rast Perde, we have Rast Makam. For Kantemir, it is the names of the Perdes and their relationship to one another that hold the key to understanding the Turkish Makam system. This is based on the actual practice of the Ottoman court and not on the abstract tuning of theoretical tetrachords. We will go over more of what constitutes a makam in our next lesson. But for now, it is important to remember the names of these parades in the diatonic pitch collection of Turkish music. Thanks. Mm -hmm.